Hi, and welcome to a new tutorial. Now it's blow after blow. As if they were collecting the great stuff all the time, they are releasing new and above all really great features almost every second. Let's have a look what the new beta has to offer. Apple Silicon Support. FL Studio can now open Intel VSTs and AU plugins while running in native Apple Silicon native mode via a process bridge. For sure exciting news for Mac users. Here comes the first banger. And this is huge. Sampler channel and audio clips. New stretch pro mode with form and control. Just for demonstration, I got here a little vocal clip with some quick and dirty pitch automation. I set this clip to our usual stretch mode to be able to automate it. It doesn't matter what the world throws at me, never try to bring me down. Pitching vocals without any form and control leads easily to the well-known Mickey Mouse effect. And while pitching up sounds a bit laughable, I find pitching down even worse. Either way, by this effect the voice loses clarity and is at extreme settings very hard to understand. I made a unique copy of the same clip, but set it to the new Stretch Mode Pro. Here we get now a new form and shift control, which is set by default to preserve the formants, to keep the voice as natural sounding as possible. It doesn't matter what the world throws at me, never try to bring me down. It doesn't matter what the world throws at me, never try to bring me down. This sounds already quite different. A bit ugly as I chose extreme values for demonstration, but it's heading in the right direction. As the stretch mode is calculated in real time, we can automate some things, and so we can do with this new control too. It doesn't matter what the world throws at me, never try to bring me down. Even more useful is this new mode in the sampler channel, where we can real-time transpose the audio via MIDI notes. This is the MIDI of my example pattern. It's going down more than an octave, and on the top 5 semitones up. With the old stretch mode, it sounds really weird. It's getting brighter. 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 Now let's change to the new mode with form and preserve. It's getting brighter. 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 Please keep in mind that we are going down quite a lot. That's why it sounds a bit rough. But especially on the high notes, the Mickey Mouse effect is completely gone. But the form and shift control is adjustable for a good reason. Depending if you are going a bigger range down or up, you can change the formants accordingly. As I am going far more down than up, I try to set the control to minus 5 semitones. It's getting brighter. 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 brighter. It's getting brighter. It's brighter. It's It's getting brighter. This made the voice more sounding like it would have been from a male singer and sounds for real time stretch algo really quite nice. Again, keep in mind that we are going down far more than one would normally pitch down any vocals. In a range of plus minus 5 semitones, which would be more appropriate for vocals, this stretch mode does already a really great job as you can hear on the higher notes. This is a very unexpected but so useful addition. Really great news. The next banger follows immediately. Event Editor to Automation Clip. A new conversion algorithm more accurately represents the original event data with fewer control points. And they forgot to say a much easier workflow. Let's go back to the last official version and have a look how this conversion worked until now. I got here a pattern clip with some event automation. 
If I go into the menu and convert this data into an automation clip, I notice immediately the mistake I did. The clip which shows the new automation curve is much too small to really judge how much I should decimate the points. And by trying anyway, it ends up with a quite edgy reproduction. So either you do it in two steps, first converting without decimating and calling up the function a second time later on, or one would need to zoom into the clip first. Open the event editor, moving it out of the way, going into the menu and triggering the command, noticing that now the automation clip window is hiding a big part, which I cannot move out of the way either. Nonetheless, I can see at least my curve a bit better. But I need quite a lot of points to keep the original shape more or less. Now let's have a look at the new way. Same project loaded, same event automation. No need to zoom into the pattern clip. I just trigger the action again. Instead of judging from the little clip, our new automation editor opens, where we find now a sensitivity slider, instead the old decimate. After setting the slider quite low, we notice the biggest difference of the conversion. It tries to recreate my previous round shape, not by putting in a ton of notes, but by using the tension curves. This new implementation has one downside though. If you convert event automation which lasts longer than one or two bars, the new automation editor window doesn't zoom out, that you can see just the first bit of the actual curve. If the important part would come later, it's impossible to make a good decision for the sensitivity slider. As long as this little window is open, it's not possible to manually zoom in or out. I already reported it to ImageLine, so hopefully they will find a better solution. Great news were too, that this new conversion seemed to be a big step into being able to record automation directly into automation clips instead of event automation. Scott teethed this a little bit. So it seems we can expect great news for the future. Typing to piano keyboard. Added a wider octaves and root note selection. As the announcement already says, there were new entries added to the typing to piano menu. I think many aren't really aware of some great functions inside here. Especially being able to trigger complete chords with some modes by hitting the number keys above. Or with the map modes on the regular keys. Layer channels. Added a new sequential playback mode, round robin style. I'm pretty sure the vast majority doesn't have ever worked with the layers generator, or if just by scratching the surface. But this old layer got some nice tricks left, especially the playback modes, which were expanded now by a round robin mode, or how it's called here, sequential mode. But these playback modes are really great to make variations from existing patterns you've already got. I made here a little example, consisting out of three instruments. All together. Already in the previous versions, we had a random feature. Instead of playing all children together, they get triggered by chance only one at a time. Newly added was a sequential mode, playing them one after the other like an arpeggiator, just here switching children instead of notes means the first note triggers child 1, the second child 2, the third child 3, starting all over again by the fourth notes triggering child 1 again.
All modes can finally be crossfaded, which can be automated. These options give us a complete different mood for the exact same pattern and can be used creatively in combination. Let's switch over to the playlist, set the layer to random and quickly consolidate this to audio. Now we do the same for the sequential mode. and combine everything like intro, break and drop. And perhaps with some variant inside. Just a quick and dirty example, but I hope you see the potential in here. Audio recording. The default value for monitor external input is now when armed. I think the previous setting was on instead. But the new one makes more sense to me, so thumbs up. Licensing and unlock. Download license updates without email and password after an initial unlock. Persistent token. I cannot show you this option as I never do online unlocks of my FL Studio, but feel free to use it. Slicer. Fill gaps and alternative fill gaps now work in 64-bit Windows and Mac OS. I never heard of any issues there, but it seems there was something wrong what they fixed now. And bug fixes are always good. Patcher. Middle click now select the map for panning. Replacing plugin picker. Use F8 or the toolbar. In previous versions, middle click in the patcher window opened the plugin picker. This has changed now. If I zoom in a bit into a structure, click and hold the middle mouse button. I can now pan the view by moving the mouse. Because the middle click is now used by this feature, you have to hit F8 or right click the toolbar icon to open the plugin picker. Keep on disk now works on macOS for long samples. And finally some new options for controller scripting. That's it for this new beta. There's really great stuff in here and this short amount of time between the last two versions encourages us to hope for even more. Have a good time, stay tuned and thank you for watching.